from Chicago, it's theCUBE. Covering Veritas Vision Solution Day 2018. Brought to you by Veritas. Welcome back to the Windy City, everybody. My name is Dave Vellante. We're here covering the Veritas Vision Solution Days at the Palmer House Hotel in Chicago, right near the lake. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. Lurleen Brown is here. She's an independent security consultant with CJJFC. Lurleen, welcome. Thanks for coming Thank on theCUBE. Thank you. Thanks for inviting us. So, uh, the CJJFC, what are you guys all about? Well, basically, we're a restartup company, small independent company. We want we to work with SMBs and nonprofits in dealing with their security issues, basically. Uh, no matter how big, how small, it's the small companies that have one of those things that it's not going to happen to us. Or oh, if it does happen to us, what do we do about it? You know, because uh, they hear about the big uh, breaches, but it can happen to a small company as well, or an SMB, especially even you know, limited budgets and stuff. How do we deal with that? How do we deal with ransomware? How do we pay it off? You know, a lot of questions and stuff like that that they're, they're really concerned about, but a lot of them have the attitude, it's not going to happen to me, something like that, but it, it can happen. There's a lot to talk about there. So let's start with small business. Small business, there's oftentimes not even a CEO, it's an owner. Right. And the distance between the owner and mm -hmm. the IT is very short. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a flat organization. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, they have so many things to worry about. The last thing they want to worry about is security. Right. A lot of times they'll have the attitude of, well, I'm not really a target, which is, mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, you are, but, mm -hmm. but so. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of them just clearly don't have, they don't have a, a SecOps team. That's true, just, that's true. Uh, they're, many of them just rely on cloud. They have mm -hmm. a zillion different SaaS products. Mm -hmm. They'd rather not have IT. Mm -hmm. So that sort of, that's true. I think, paints a picture. That's true. How, how do you help them? And do they contact you? Do you contact them? Both? Well, it both goes both ways. Uh, basically, you, we, uh, a lot of them don't even have an IT department right. or an IT person. You know, they go and buy Somebody knows how to work a computer, turn it off and on, make sure the stuff is backed up. <laughs> Fred's really good with this, ask him. <laughs> you know, and then turn it off at the end right. of the day. Um, but so you have to deal with that. You also have to deal with, if they do have an ID department, it's one person's got to deal with a whole lot of issues. You know, backup, uh, where is it going to go to? Uh, do we have a cloud provider? You know, if we do, who is it, what is it? Uh, do we have, you know, anything else? Do we have on-site premise or off-sites? So it's a lot of stuff you got to do, and, and the main bottom line is budgeting. Do we have the money or the budget to get this stuff that we need, that we basically need, in order for us to survive? Because this boils down to if you don't have it, and something happens to you, something major, a crash or whatever, we, you know, do you have the backup? Do you have something viable to say to your clients, "Oh, we're okay. We got your data. We're secure. Um, we can go on with business as usual," or would they just, you know, go off and find somebody else? So we always talk about on theCUBE, people, process, and technology, um, bad security practices mm -hmm. by users can always trump good technology. Mm -hmm. So I presume a lot of your consulting is around people and processes. Mm -hmm. so that's true, that's true. It's, and a lot of it's in transition. You know, a uh, good example, when Windows decided to go from XP to 7 and 8 and all this, it was a big brouhaha about it. Some people still want to deal with XP. They don't want, because they hear about you know, how good Windows 8 or 10 is and stuff like that. But a lot of people, it's, it's a, it was a slow transition for a lot of people to move over from XP because it was very dependable. You didn't hear a lot of problems out of it. All of a sudden you hear, oh, uh, Windows 10, we got some issues. We got some uh, stuff we got to fix. Um, and it's kind of like a panic attack mode. You know, you're in those panic modes. Do we want to go back to XP or do you want to, you know, um, one of our records are in XP, but we want to go to 10. Will they transfer over? How secure is going to be that? How, you know, how secure is that? So it's like, it's like that kind of example. It's, um, it takes time for people to slowly migrate from one thing to another to make sure it's safe and it's dependable, and also it's secure enough that it can be comfortable with it. So when the next phase comes up, they can, they can be a little bit more comfortable and saying, well, okay, we go to Windows 12 or something like that. Or, uh, and then we'd be okay from 10 to 12 and we had no problems with it. So that's an example of just basically, basically having core infrastructure mm -hmm. that's kept up to date, you're up to date on patching, I mean, it's a basic mm -hmm. security hygiene. Mm -hmm. um, there's also the perimeter, and we always hear, well, people spend a lot of time and effort and money on the perimeter, but, but people are going to get 
get through the perimeter. Mm -hmm. Phishing is a huge problem. Yes, it is. You know, the yes. threat matrix with mobile. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a zillion mobile apps, and right. it's impossible to keep them up to date. Mm. Um, so, our small business owners, which I presume is your primary mm -hmm. you know, discussion yes. point, yeah. How aware are they uh, of this problem? You know, on a scale of one to ten, is it a is it a two because they have so many other things to worry about? Is it escalating up to a six, seven, eight? What do you think? It depends on the company. Some mm -hmm. are twos and some are fives or six. It, it, uh, one size doesn't enough at all. Yeah. And that's one thing they have to realize that one can do more than the other, and some can do less than the other. But it all depends on the company, their attitude, and it boils down to trust. Do we trust ourselves enough to go into that next phase? Of, of updating our security or updating our um, software and all that stuff, the patches and stuff. Do we have the equipment to do to have that ability to do that as well too? Because you got to look at your budget costs and your security. That goes hand in hand. Backup and security used to be largely two separate domains, mm -hmm. sort of in their own little islands. Right. They're almost, you know, mm -hmm. they're certainly intertwined. Today. Oh yes. Why is that? And. And how are those two worlds coming together? Well, I think it's, it's, it was a gradual process because everybody wanted to keep things separate. But they found that there's a whole lot of commonality, a whole lot of links that they finally come to realize it's together uh, dealing with security because if you didn't have security, we would have more than enough um, breaches than we have now. Especially with small businesses, you can't afford to have a breach because that makes or breaks your company. So you have to look at that and say, well, we need that, but like I said, within the perimeters of your business. Uh, some can afford more, some can afford less, or just stabilize what they have now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about ransomware a little okay. bit. Um, everybody is in the news. Oh, yeah. As a, as a small business owner, you're like, oh, oh my God, I hope that never happens to me. But mm -hmm. a lot of times they're thinking, well, that's never going to happen to me because <laughs> you know, I'm a small guy. Right. But it could happen. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and so what do you advise people to do? You're trying to create air gaps? Uh, what, what role does backup and data protection Backup play? is a major thing, especially, uh, especially if you have a lot of old data and you want to make sure you have that because once it's lost, it's lost. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are not really familiar with ransomware. They hear about it. They think, oh, they, they hold my, you know, I have to. It's just like anything else. Like um, if you kidnap somebody, you know, you hold them from ransom, you want this amount of money in order to get that person back. Ransomware is the same thing, but you're using bitcoins instead of Money, which is what well, this technically is money, but a lot of them don't have that have that thing about. It's not going to affect me. Like you were talking about earlier, uh, does it affect me? Uh, how will it affect me? Or read up more about it. A lot of people that have not really read up about. It. They hear the word. It's like a buzzword, and they say, "Oh, ransomware. What is that? Is that a new software product, or is that a new something yeah, yeah, like right. that?" You know. So they have to really keep informed and keep up with what is going on, especially in small businesses, and where the possibility is. Is, I think it's more greater than big businesses because big businesses can recover. Small businesses can't as and much. Big businesses, they've got the resources. Right. And they, they know what ransomware is. They right. maybe created some kind of right. air gap between their data right. center and their right. offsite. They've got something in the Iron Mountain and the oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Maybe they get stuff on tape. Small companies are like, no, they, they don't. don't even think what, about what, what resources do they have? Well, do they have enough resources yeah. as well? And have they kept up with the different kind of resources that are available, especially gearing towards them? Mm. What's your relationship with, with Veritas? Why are you here? You're not a customer, no. you're not a big gold partner, but what, what, what well, brought you I don't want to see what's going on with Veritas. I've heard a lot about it, and I just, well, we're here to get some information and how we relate to what we're going to be dealing with with, our custom, with, possible, with future customers or present customers and stuff like that. So that's basically what we're here for, just from gather information, sort it out, how it affect you know small businesses and nonprofits, and how it can you know it can help them and benefit them as as much as for larger companies. My last question for you is: Can, if, is, can you summarize the advice that you would give to a small business owner or a nonprofit, you know, MD? What do you what do you tell them in in the context of security and data protection? Back up, especially back up, and do your homework. A lot of them do do your due diligence because it makes or breaks you. And so they, they listen to that advice? Some of them do, and some of them, you know, it's up to them. I have to say, it's up to, everybody's an individual, you can't say, you know, but just look at what happens to other people, find examples, talk to other people that you know, and uh, do your homework, and back up, back up, back up. Ignore that advice at your own peril, Erlene, thanks very much for Thank coming you. on theCUBE. Thank you very much for you. inviting us. You're, you're very welcome. Okay, you're watching theCUBE. 
We're here at Veritas Vision Day in Chicago. We're right back right after this short break. 